Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Welcome you all to the next uh, lecture on uh, the inorganic complexes or primarily the coordination chemistry aspects pertinent to the this particular course which is inorganic chemistry of uh, life. Uh, in the previous class we have looked at uh, various characteristics of the uh, coordination complexes in terms of the ligands and towards the end I talked to you about spectrochemical series and uh, the uh, effect of the ligands on the splitting energy. Uh, so, the halides uh, split to the least to compared to the oxo ligands, compared to the nitrogen ligands, compared to the carbon ligands. I also mentioned to you that these can be explained not by the electronegativity principle, but by their uh, pi acid pi base characteristics. Now, so at this juncture let me introduce what is the uh, uh, acid and base uh, what I mean by so, the metal ion uh, is considered as uh, a, a Lewis acid and the ligand is considered as uh, Lewis base. Okay. So, what is Lewis acid and what is Lewis base? So, I am sure every one of you know uh, that what is a Lewis acid, what is a Lewis base, but nevertheless to bring to a, a recapitulation then let me tell you that the Lewis acid is the one where uh, you will find a low lying em empty orbital means an orbital which is empty which is ready to accept electron pair. The, on the other hand Lewis base is the one where you have a filled electron or electron pair which is higher energy therefore, is ready to donate. So, ready to donate ready to accept. So, accepting is coming to the Lewis acid donating is coming to the Lewis base uh, uh, character of this. Uh, this is an important concept uh, that you need to keep in mind when we are looking at all the metal ions are Lewis acids and the, all the ligands are Lewis bases. So, the ligands coming from for example, in the biological systems what are the ligands? We have seen the carboxylate group is a ligand, a, a thiol function is a ligand, a phenolate function is a ligand, uh, an amine function is a ligand. So, all these kinds of ligands are all uh, the uh, Lewis bases and the metal ions of course, we have the iron 2 plus, iron 3 plus or copper 2 plus or zinc 2 plus, nickel 2 plus, manganese 2 plus all of these. So, therefore, this should be clear to you when you are studying the uh, inorganic chemistry of life or biological inorganic chemistry aspects. So, therefore, I have introduced this concept. Please do a bit of exercise so that you get uh, uh, familiarized with this by looking at some of the examples of these. Okay, what I explained to you earlier, uh, the uh, halides, uh, the weakest in terms of splitting the energy and the carbon ligands like cyanide and carbon monoxide are the strongest to uh, split the binding energy and therefore, the ones which split large will try to impose pairing of the electrons, whereas those which uh, split to less extent will not impose any pairing uh, at all. So, therefore, you will have the uh, high spin complexes coming from these ligands and low spin complexes coming from these ligands okay? and that is one thing is good enough. Now, there is another uh, aspect that we need to understand about the inorganic complexes or coordination complexes. So, the coordination complexes, inorganic complexes, what we need to know additionally is that the hard and soft character of both the Lewis acid as well as the Lewis base. Uh, just now I have already defined to you Lewis acid as well as the Lewis base. So, to explain its hardness and softness, so we need to look at the following aspects. So, let me give a, a note of caution, this hardness and softness is not a mechanical hard and mechanical soft it is a chemical hot and chemical soft aspects of that, which is dependent on the polarization as well as the polarizability. So, atom is the one which is having a nucleus and electronic cloud. So, if the electronic cloud is distorted a lot, okay, then the size of the ion will uh, be increasing 
and that becomes uh, uh, more softer uh, in a chemically. Okay. And uh, on the other hand, if you have a smaller size, smaller electron cloud, uh, then you have a, a strong uh, you know capturing by the nucleus. So, they, such a kind of things will tend to be uh, hard chemically hard in nature. So, this means what is important is polarizability and polarization. See when you take an ensemble of uh, a molecule or an atoms, uh, each atom or each molecule is in the field of all the other molecules. So, what field? Electric field of all that. So, therefore, this electric field try to distort the electron density of uh, the, the central one. So, if it is uh, able to distort quite well, it is a uh, you know uh, its ability uh, to for the distortion is quite large and that is referred as the polarizing ability of this polarizability. To what extent an atom can get polarized, an ion can get polarized, a molecule can get polarized by the surrounding electric field which is generated by the neighboring atoms, neighboring ions, neighboring molecules. So, therefore, you can take it as a kind of a rule of thumb, small ions or small atoms, highly charged cations, they have a, a greater polarizing ability, but they will not get polarized. They will polarize others, they will not have their polarize, polarizing ability is more, but polarizability is a low large and highly charged anions are easily polarized and that means they get they are polar, their polarizability is much greater on this. So, similarly if you can look at higher ionization energy, small size, low polarizability these are referred as harder, this is chemically harder. Those having a low ionization, larger size and uh, high polarizability they are softer. So, as I said both the uh, Lewis acids can be harder, Lewis acids can be softer and uh, similarly Lewis base can be harder, Lewis base can be softer. And as I said the metal is called the Lewis acid, ligand is called the Lewis base, therefore you are looking at the combination of Lewis acid and Lewis base. So, therefore the hard acids will combine strongly with the hard bases and soft acids will be combined uh, with the soft bases. So, hard hard combination is stronger, soft soft combination is stronger. Generally the lighter elements of a group when you look at the periodic table a group they are chemically harder and the ones which are down which are heavier in that group they are all uh, softer in that kind of thing. So, same thing is explained by the diagram over here which compi compares the polarizability with respect to the ionization. So, the ionization polarizability ionization and polarizability. So, the greater ionization potential with a lower polarizability, lower ionization potential with a greater ionizability that is all uh, the thing that we need to uh, know. So, this can be further explained by using uh, the homo lumo kind of a uh, idea. See uh, acid, uh, the acid will have an, a, an empty orbital and this is what you can look at and the base have a failed one. So, and uh, so this becomes hard when you have a greater gap okay. and uh, so therefore, you can see that the hard base with the soft becomes you need a lot of uh, energy difference. A hard acid with a hard base does not require much of a energy variation. So, that means energy comparability or low lying orbit uh, the, the empty orbital and the fill orbital should have a comparable in their energies. If they have a comparability in their energy of course, symmetry is also important then you will have a easy overlap. So, therefore, the hard acid hard base will have a better overlap whereas, hard acid hard base with a with a soft acid will not be so favorable okay. and similarly soft acid with a soft base there is a favorability. So, therefore, soft acid soft base combination is better because their uh, empty orbital and fill orbital respectively are in parallel in, 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 in reasonable energy comparison. In case of hot acid hot base again the empty orbital and the, uh, the filled, uh, filled electron pair have a comparable energies all that you need to 
uh, keep that in mind is. The second thing that you keep in uh, need to keep in mind is if the uh, the homo to lumo gap is large then it is hard, if the homo to lumo gap is smaller then it is softer. So, harder and softer, harder and softer kind of a uh, thing that uh, you can look at. So, this can also be a talked in a little different way. Uh, this is nothing but the difference in the ionization energy of a neutral atom and its anion. So, what is the ionization energy of the neutral atom? What is the ionization energy of its anion? That difference. If difference is large, then it is hard. If the difference is small, it is uh, soft. Just like the uh, the homo lumo difference. Homo lumo difference is large, again hard. Homo lumo difference is small, it is soft. Okay, so this can also be quantified by using the Pearson absolute hardness scale, uh, eta. Uh, so I minus e by two. Okay, the homo energy and lumo energy by two. So, it is uh, so hard acids tend to combine with hard bases preferentially, soft acids tend to combine with soft bases preferentially. Why? I just now explained to you the reason is that the hard acid having a empty orbital and the hard base is having a filled orbital, these two orbitals have a very comparable in energy. Similarly, soft acid having an em empty orbital, soft base is having an empty or, or, or filled orbital, these two having very similar in energies. So, therefore, such kind of cases will give uh, a more uh, uh, you know uh, preferential binding. So, soft, soft, soft acid, soft base combination is stronger hard acid, hard base some combination is again stronger in the complexations. Okay. So, just to give an idea as I said that the ions with a greater charge smaller size will be tend to be hard, uh, having uh, the smaller charge and greater size obviously will be softer and the anions more and more anionic charge will be softer, more and more cationic so charge will be harder. So, just keeping that in mind you can divide these into hard and soft with some kind of a borderline cases. As you can see the uh, plus 1 sodium, lithium, potassium, uh, magnesium, calcium, manganese, chromium etcetera. Uh, borderline you have is uh, zinc, copper, 2 plus nickel etcetera and softer copper plus, silver plus, gold plus, okay, thallium plus they are all very uh, large in size and smaller in charge. So, these for large in size and smaller in charge they will be tend to be more softer and the those which greater charge and smaller size even if the charge is smaller the size is also smaller then again hard. Uh, so, they are hard soft. So, this is within the acids and this part is within the bases or ligands or anions. So, this is uh, uh, the Lewis base and this is for the Lewis acid. So, you can see that oxygen based one, what uh, ROH, O minus they are all on the hard side, these are all oxygen based ones. And then if you have a nitrogen based ones, they are somewhere in between or borderline or intermediate. Now, if you look at the sulfur based ones or carbon based ones, these are all softer and that we have seen already too. Okay? So, therefore, hard base, hard uh, soft base, hard acid, soft acid, I hope this is clear to you. So, towards the end what you need to remember is the size and the charge. If the size is large and the charge is smaller, softer, size is uh, uh, small and charge is greater again is uh, harder, whether it is an anion or cation kind of thing. So, you need to look at both of these. Okay, so, we have tried to finish quite a few aspects of this. Then how do we try to understand this into the metal ions into when you put them into biological systems or when you put into the biological uh, you know, systems like proteins and enzymes. So, what you look at there one is that the metal ion sits in the metal protein or metal enzyme and does not sit ideally as I have shown you already is bonded to the side chain residues of the protein and forms a uh, coordination complex. So, it interacts it binds therefore, it is a thermodynamic stability is, is associated with this. And of course, uh, the surrounding uh, 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 groups which are coming from the protein will also apply certain kind of criteria conditions on the metal ion in terms of the geometry 
uh, and in terms of the uh, the crystal field splitting other kinds of things. So, so it all follows the coordination chemistry principles what you want. So, now what we saw is the situation where you have a metal protein you have metal ion sitting in this and that is not sufficient enough that tells you about the only thermodynamic, but what you require is kinetics in metal enzymes are what they are catalytic they show reaction they are not just like that sitting ideally there. So, therefore, uh, the metal enzymes and metal proteins having a metal ion or metal complex inside the protein and the uh, protein compartment, but they do uh, show a function. To show a function you need the reactivity and this is the reactivity which we are talking about in terms of the liability aspect of it. So, this is absolutely important again it depends on uh, the what is the kind of a coordination sphere that you have, what is the charge of the metal ion center, what is the size of the metal ion center and what is the protein influence all of these again uh, influence the reliability. All those parameters which are influencing the stability are also influencing the liability as well in a different way. So, one of the ways of understanding the liability is that suppose you have a, a, a coordination complex having a ligand bonded to the metal center. If such a ligand can be exchanged by an outer ligand or outer at, uh, ion or outer molecule and the rate at which it can be exchanged is the one which you can talk in terms of the liability or rate of exchange or rate of reactivity. So, all these things generally one would measure you take a, a metal ion with a coordination sphere of water and you take a labeled water in the bulk and see how well a labeled water is exchanging with the water which is bound to the metal center that can of rate. So, the greater the rate of exchange between the coordination sphere and the bulk is the kind of a rate of exchange that you can explain uh, in this. So, uh, the phase oil other kind of a things is redox. So, during the reactions uh, a large number of reactions in metal enzymes the metal ion undergoes the redox not necessarily in every case, but large number. So, metal ion can go oxidized can undergo to reduction. So, redox process will act. So, how well this redox process is favored by the protein or enzyme that they are still bound to the enzyme. Can the enzyme allow the next higher oxidation? Can the enzyme allow next lower oxidation state? So, if the enzyme can uh, a, a, allow both of these, then you have a facile redox process in these things too. So, the capability to act as a Lewis acid and to activate the uh, how well they will activate the organic moiety. In this case, organic moiety is the protein, and organic moiety is the small molecule which comes and binds to the metal center for activation or for uh, recognition purpose all of these are important uh, in the physical aspects of that. So, I have, we have looked at uh, the stability we have looked at the liability. So, let us look at the stability aspect with a little more uh, quantitative aspect of it. Uh, there are uh, the y axis is the uh, log of k formation. So, that is formation constant the logarithmic value that means 10 powers are taken by logarithmic. So, there becomes uh, the 3 means 10 power 3, 10 power 6, 10 power 9, 10 power 12 and log k will become 3, 6, 9 and 12 and you take these ligands and add these ions and all of these are taken as a divalent, divalent ions. So, B A 2 plus S R 2 plus not the B A atom S R atom calcium atom is the ions. Now, if you add this one and you will form some kind of a complex. So, take uh, oxygen based the black one here you start from here as you go from barium to strontium to calcium to mang magnesium to manganese etcetera etcetera it is going and increasing to the maximum at copper and then decrease, decreases. Now, if you take ethylene diamond nitrogen ligand it is starting from somewhere much lower than this and then increasing and if I take the uh, one nitrogen ligand other oxygen ligand uh, combined. So, as you can see in all the cases as you go from left to the right there is an increase in the uh, uh, formation energy or the formation constant in all of these and it uh, goes to a peak value around the copper and then goes uh, down I will explain you this in a while. But that is true with all this. So, we have taken oxygen based ligand, we have taken a, uh, the two nitrogen ligands, we have taken one oxygen one nitrogen two nitrogens 
and then one nitrogen one sulfur. As you go from oxygen is a very uh, hard kind of thing and when you go to the, uh, the next one having one oxygen one nitrogen little bit of soft character is introduced. When you go to the both nitrogens little more soft character than the oxygen is introduced. When you go to the one nitrogen and one sulfur see here one sulfur and one nitrogen and then much more soft character. So, that as the soft character is increased that is the, uh, the formation constant is gone down and on this side the formation constant is gone up you see that. So, these are barium, strontium, calcium, magnesium and these are manganese, iron, cobalt, nickel. So, therefore, transition metals behave differently because of their d electronic configurations So this. So, this kind of a stability order is explained uh, by Irving William and this is known as the Irving William uh, series of divalent cation things and this can be understood from the following kind of a uh, ionic radii plots and uh, uh, the lattice energies radius versus the hydration energy of this. You see that it is going uh, down as you add one electron, one electron, one electron etcetera go into the D 5 system again D 6 onwards go down and the minimum that is coming over here. So, therefore, it is based on the electron connectivity in the D uh, system that is all you can say and then goes back to this. So, if you do not have this uh, uh, 5 orbitals and filling 1 1 each then followed by the second one you would not have got like this you would have got this along with this particular uh, uh, the dotted line. The other one is that if there is no uh, the uh, spin problems then you would have got into these ones. So, therefore, uh, this kind of a ionic radii or uh, uh, the lattice energy or hydration energy can explain. So, here lattice energy as you see exactly the reverse of this one and goes down and again reverse. So, the maximum value here obviously in the negative side negative minimum value and maximum value and that is what, what you are finding in uh, a transition metal. So, in the transition metal it is dependent on the d electron filling. So, therefore, you see the kind of a uh, trend that you see uh, here. So, this kind of a trend ok and uh, we talked about the liability just this gives you a quantification of the liability. Let us look at uh, the top tire here the top tire uh, yeah before going to that let us see the scale uh, the scale center point is 10 power 0 as you go uh, right side 10 power 2, 10 power 4, 10 power 6, 10 power 8, 10 power 10 what is this? This is uh, rate, rate is what per second. So, rate is per second. So, this is a value per second. So, how do we understand? As I told you earlier, you take let us say an aqua complex, put into a D2O and see how the D2O is exchanging with the uh, water or put into a O18 water and see how the O18 is exchanging with the, the, uh, with the, uh, uh, with the metal center. So, if you look at the uh, alkali ions uh, they are all having very high rate of exchange and you take alkaline earth ions divalent ions they have a little bit lower. Then you look at uh, the some of the trivalents etcetera they have much lower. So, as this charge increasing their their liability is getting decreased as you go from here to here to here. And as you go to this uh, uh, particular uh, you know within the group within the group as you go from uh, lithium to sodium to potassium to rubidium to cesium the rate of exchange is increasing. So, what is changing not the charge what is changing it is the size. So, as the size increases and uh, the charge uh, charge remains the same that you have an increase in rate of exchange. So, in other words in any of the group as you go from top to the bottom the size obviously is increasing the, the charge is kept maintained uh, constant. So, if you maintain the same charge and the size as you go down the group then you have an increase uh, in the rate of exchange of the reaction in that. Similarly, you can see magnesium, calcium, strontium, barium etcetera you can see that again in the alkaline earth ions again the change uh, will explain the same kind of a rate of uh, rate of exchange. So, now coming to some uh, transition metal ions here uh, you can see some of the ions are on this side that means 10 power minus 
2 minus 4 minus 6 minus 8 minus 10 this is not plus and this side is the plus 1. So, you can see that uh, uh, some of the ions which are there here the this is the chromium uh, 3 plus and if you look at the chromium 2 plus the chromium 2 plus is somewhere here. So, huge difference between chromium 2 plus and chromium 2 plus. You see cobalt uh, 2 plus here and cobalt 3 plus uh, is not shown here, but it will be somewhere in this range, this region. So, therefore, we know that the chromium 3 is a very inert, chromium 2 is very um, uh, labile. Similarly, iron 2, iron 3, okay? iron 2 is somewhere here, iron 3 is somewhere here. So, very close to the 10 power 2 and this is very close to the 10 power 6 or 7, there is about 10 power 4 difference between iron 2 and iron 3. So, that is why iron 2 is labile and iron 3 is inert, cobalt 2 is labile, labile cobalt 3 is inert, chromium 2 is labile, chromium 3 is inert. Okay. So, all of these, so you can see that how do you quantify the liability of the complexes. Uh, so, how do we quantify the liability of the complex? How do we quantify the, uh, the stability of the complex? Stability of the complex is quantified by delta G is minus NFE. So, uh, the greater the minus value of the delta G naught, this is you take it as delta G naught minus NFE naught. So, therefore, if it goes by this more and more negative, then it is more and more, uh, uh, more feasible, more and more uh, stable kind of thing as you know from the thermodynamic. From the kinetic uh, uh, liability that is uh, the, this can be quantified from the crystal field stabilization energy of the reactant minus the crystal field stabilization of the activated complex and this will give a measure. If this value is positive it is labile, more positive more labile, less positive less labile, but if it is negative it is inert. So, the opposite to labile is inert. So, labile very fast exchange, inert is very slow exchange or no exchange kind of thing. So, labile and inert are the two terms which you use for kinetics and the feasible non feasible are the terms which you use for the thermodynamics. So, thermodynamic aspects of it and kinetic aspects of it too. Let us look at uh, this particular table for a while. Uh, this particular table is given uh, for different uh, D configurations D0, D1, D2, D3, etc., etc., and it is also given for different spin states as well as the coordination numbers. So, there are three parameters spin state, coordination number, and the D configuration. There are three. So, it's kind of a three dimensional plot kind of thing. So, if you take the coordination number 5, uh, you see these are the plus values that means they are labile, and this is a minus value that means inert, and this is labile. If you see the uh, same high spin with the coordination number 7, these are labile and this is inert. So, similarly, you can gauge which are the labile, which are the, uh, the so almost all D1, uh, D2 for all the uh, low spin, high spin 5 and 7, they are all labile and you go to the uh, D3, they are all uh, inert both for the high spin and low spin and then D4 is again. Uh, labile only for uh, 5 coordination, but inert for the other one. So, it is not only dependent on the number of electrons present in the D, it also depend upon the jam, uh, number of coordinate, coordination number as well as the spin state of it. So, continuing to uh, the same thing to D6, D7, D8, D9, etcetera, you can see that um, D6, D7 for the high spin, there uh, these uh, and high spin for this uh, coordination number 5, coordination number 7, both of these are uh, labile. But when you go to the, uh, uh, the other part that is the low spin part for the 5 and the 7, they are different. So, that means because the electronic configuration is different. D n is same, but the electronic configuration is different. So, compared to D n, you need to give importance to the electronic configuration as well. And, uh, the uh, coordination number. Uh, so, the, all these are important. So, for when it comes to the D 8, all of them are inert, all of them are inert. We come to the D 7, uh, the, the 5 coordination, 7 coordination, uh, high spin or uh, labile 
and five coordination low spin is also labile, but uh, low spin of the seven coordination is again inert. So, therefore, you can see the inert and the uh, liability is explained by the difference in the crystal field stabilization energy uh, uh, difference between the reactant and the activated complex. I hope you just read a bit from the uh, uh, known coordination chemistry things so to make yourself familiar with this. And uh, let us look at uh, this one, this will explain you uh, the kind of a thing labile and this is fast because this can be exchanged very easily and this is again labile and force this can be exchanged very easily too and these are the some other things. So, so what we need to learn at the end is that in this particular uh, class the let us take metal ion uh, and water, water bonded to metal ion uh, can, uh, can polarize the OH bond and give H plus and this depends on the what kind of a metal ion you have. If you have a calcium 13.4 pK, manganese 11.1, copper 10.7, zinc 10.0. So, from 14 pK it goes to 10 pK that means it becomes much more labile and can push the proton out. Similarly, an imidazole bound one in the uh, cobalt, nickel and copper. So, this means then when some of the ligands are bound to the metal ion, their polarization of the OH bond uh, varies and the stronger new Lewis acid will polarize better and that can become instead of OH2 as OH, instead of NH2 as NH. So, such kind of species are uh, dominant during the reactivity and I will explain when it comes to there, but at that time you should keep in mind the pKa. So, with this uh, kind of thing I will try to uh, close uh, for the uh, coordination chemistry uh, perspectives required for this particular course. Uh, and uh, then in the next class I will talk to you about what kind of techniques are used for the gazing the inorganic ions and elements in the biological system. Uh, and uh, so therefore, please uh, sort of revise your coordination chemistry abilities using these as a background and going through the uh, some of the very simple uh, textbooks you can look at and then try to make yourself familiarize with this. Uh, thank you very much.